Greetings, pilgrims. Once again, this is episode 14 of the Polygon Pilgrimage. Now, today I'm going to be talking to you about the transform dialog here. This is a really handy guy that most people don't know how to use. Now, what I mean by that is, say I have an object here, and I want to move some points around on the object, like we do all the time. Most people just go right into their transform gizmo here, and they'll just start pushing and pulling points. Now, they might look down at the bottom there, where I have my X, Y, and Z for the translation readout, to try and line up a point, say I want this at right at 3.0, uh, it's hard to do, 3.0001, but that's not exact. Now, recently I've been doing a lot of work with the mansion, as you know, and this requires me to have a high degree of precision. So, enter the transform dialog. If I want to move these points exactly 12 inches, well, I can kind of get it there, but it's never really precise. Now, my other option here is to type in 84 plus 12, and it will move it to exactly the right spot. But what I can do, since work smarter, not harder, if you type in a number here into the offset, so I'm going to go negative 12 on the X and hit enter, bam, it snaps it right to 96, and I'm ready to go and build my walls and whatever else I need to do. So what you could do here is, instead of trying to type in 96 and do all the math and have your calculator up and all that, what I do is just, you know, you know you need to move this 12 inches, so let Max do the work for you. Say, Max, move it 12, and there you go. Now this works for single points, as well as any number of selections of points as well. Now, I say points because we happen to be in vertex mode. This also works with every other type of selection. So I can go into my edges and say I want these edges to move positive 12 on the Y and I can start to bulb out this shape. An additional advantage to this is that you can do this with more than just moving. You can do this with rotating or scaling as well. So here I have my rotation. So say I want this part of the uh, shape here to start curving downwards. Again, I could grab this and drag and try and figure it out myself. Or I could just type into the translation what I want, and it does it for me. Now what this does is it rotates based upon the center of mass of the selection. So if I have all these selected, it's going to rotate based upon an imaginary point in the center of every face, not the whole selection of faces as a whole. So you have to be careful with that a little bit, but it's very helpful for if you want to select all these that are together and start to slope down this floor. It makes the whole process very, very organic. Now let's go over here to a secondary example I have set up over here. This is a little modular piece of dirt, a little piece of land that I've got figured out here. And I've been messing with it for a while, but I know that I have to put a bucket on this. And I really want to make sure that this selection here is flat. Again, it's difficult because you have this three axes at once trying to eyeball what's flat. Well, I went ahead and figured it out for us for today. But an example here in the translation, I can just type in numbers and I can do it over and over again. So you can hit each axis as you wish. You don't have to do... You can't do actually more than one at a time, which saves you a lot of effort with trying to do too much at once. What you really want to do is just one thing at a time and make sure you get it right. Then we can go to the scale. The scale here, we've got a couple different scale options. First one is a uniform scale, and it's going to do all three dimensions at once, which is great for some things, but not so great for others. Now, if I drop down to the third option here on the list, I can scale based upon a single axis at a time. So what I want to do here in particular is I want to make sure that my Z is at 50%. So it's 50% from where it was to where it is now. It kind of creates a middle section there and says, there we go. So now if I undo that, I have a flattened piece of earth here. And now I can go ahead and unhide our bucket and you can see it's sitting nice and flat on that piece of earth and I don't have to worry about it being 
uneven because I did the math and got it all set. I put it through a little bit here so that you avoid any sort of a uh, light leaks or anything of that nature. So I hope that was helpful for you guys and I wanted to make sure I shared this with you. It's one of my favorite tools and uh, as all my work with the mansion moving points in exact amounts I wouldn't be able to do that work without a tool like this. So I wanted to make sure that I you know, showed it to you. And uh, yeah, I hope you enjoyed, and we'll see you next time as the pilgrimage continues.